Imagine a world where jagged mountains pierce a sky heavy with storm clouds, where endless savannas stretch under a merciless sun, and where small bands of early humans, barely distinguishable from the animals they hunt, take their first steps into the unknown. Over 2.5 million years ago, in a prehistoric Africa teeming with life and danger, our ancestors began a journey that would change the course of history. They left their homeland, not with maps or plans, but with courage, curiosity, and an unyielding will to survive. This is the story of the first migrations out of Africa, out of Africa One, a saga of tiny brain pioneers who defied the odds to conquer continents. Why did they leave? How did they survive? And what can their story teach us about who we are today? Stick with me because this journey into the deep past is about to get wild. Let's transport ourselves to the East African Rift, 2.6 million years ago. The landscape is a mosaic of grasslands, woodlands, and shimmering lakes. Herds of antelope graze warily, while saber-toothed cats lurk in the shadows. The air hums with the calls of birds and the distant roars of predators. Here, small groups of early hominins, likely early homo or even late australopithecines, eke out a living. Their brains are small, about a third the size of ours roughly 400, 600 cubic centimeters. Their tools, crude Olduin stones chipped into sharp flakes for cutting meat or scraping hides. Life is brutal. Droughts parch the land, floods reshape rivers, and survival demands constant adaptation. These hominins aren't just surviving, they're innovating. They're learning to scavenge carcasses, outsmart predators, and share food within their groups. But something stirs within them, Perhaps a drying climate pushes them toward new territories. Maybe curiosity drives them to follow migrating herds. Whatever the spark, they begin to move, crossing the Sinai Peninsula into the unfamiliar landscapes of Western Asia. This isn't a single exodus, but a series of waves spanning hundreds of thousands of years, each group venturing farther than the last. Our first clue to these migrations comes from Jordan, a land of rolling hills and seasonal rivers 2.48 million years ago. Archaeologists have unearthed Oldowan tools, simple palm-sized stones with sharp edges scattered across a prehistoric campsite. These tools, dated to 2.48 million years, are among the oldest signs of hominins outside Africa. Picture a small band of wanderers, no taller than a modern child, huddling around a scavenged carcass. They strike stones together, creating flakes to slice through tough hide. The tools are basic, but they're effective, allowing these hominins to process food in a new environment. What's remarkable is the timing. At 2.48 million years ago, Australopithecines, ape-like ancestors, still roamed Africa alongside early Homo. Were these toolmakers Homo habilis with slightly larger brains or an even earlier lineage? The tools don't tell us they're maker species, but they scream adaptability. Jordan's climate was cooler and wetter than Africa's, with different plants and animals. These hominins weren't just following familiar prey, they were learning to thrive in a foreign world. Let's pause to consider what this means. These weren't the towering, big-brained Homo erectus we often imagine as humanity's first explorers. They were small, vulnerable and armed with the simplest technology. Yet they crossed continents. This challenges everything we thought we knew about early human potential. It's not brain size or fancy tools that define these pioneers. It's resilience and cooperation. Now let's journey to the Siwalik Hills where India meets Nepal 2.58 million years ago. The landscape is a rugged tapestry of forested slopes and flood-prone valleys. Monsoons drench the region, carving rivers that carry bones and stones. Here in a site called Masal, archaeologists uncovered something extraordinary, three fossilized animal bones bearing cut marks. These marks, dated to 2.58 million years, weren't made by animal teeth, but by stone tools, deliberately wielded by hominins. Imagine the scene. A group of hominins stumbles upon a buffalo carcass half buried in flood sediment. 
They kneel beside it, using sharp flakes to carve off strips of meat. Their hands are callous, their bodies lean from endless walking. The cuts they leave on the bones are precise, a testament to skill honed over generations. These bones are sparse evidence, only three among hundreds, but they're significant. In Java, a hot spot of hominin activity, only five cut mark bones have been found despite millions of years of occupation. Massol's marks suggest hominins were here, scavenging and surviving earlier than we ever imagined. Skeptics might argue these marks could be natural, but experiments recreating the cuts with local stones confirm their artificial origin. If these are human-made, they pushed the first migration out of Africa to 2.58 million years ago, before Homo erectus, before even Homo habilis. This raises a tantalizing question. Were these hominins a transitional species, bridging Australopithecines and early Homo? We don't have their fossils, but their tools and marks paint a picture of bold explorers, undaunted by distance or danger. Fast forward to 1.85 million years ago in the lush valleys of Dominici, Georgia. Towering mountains frame a landscape of grasslands and forests where deer, rhinos, and elephants roam. Here, one of the greatest archaeological sites in the world has yielded five hominin skulls, 50 bones, and thousands of stone tools, all dated between 1.78 and 1.85 million years. These are the oldest human remains found outside Africa, offering a vivid snapshot of who these wanderers were. The Demonizi hominins were small, about 1.5 meters tall, with brains of 610 to 775 cubic centimeters, half the size of a modern human's. Their tools were Oldowan, like those in Jordan and Massal, but their lives were anything but simple. Analysis of 17,000 animal bones at the site reveals a crucial detail. Every single one belongs to Eurasian species. These hominins weren't chasing African prey, they were hunting and scavenging local animals, from deer to woolly rhinos. This adaptability shatters the idea that early migrants were tethered to familiar ecosystems. They learned to exploit new environments, mastering the challenges of colder climates and diverse fauna. But the most striking find is a skull and jaw from an elderly hominin, nicknamed Gummy Joe for its near toothless state. This individual, with only one tooth, survived for years. Their tooth sockets reabsorbed from gumming soft food. In a world without cooking, this suggests extraordinary care. Someone, perhaps a family member or friend, chewed food for them, shared resources, and ensured their survival. This isn't just evidence of survival, it's proof of compassion, a trait we associate with modern humans, but rooted deep in our past. Menisi's hominins, sometimes called Homo georgicus, challenged traditional labels. Were they early Homo erectus, a distinct species? The labels matter less than the story they tell. Small-brained, short-statured hominins, armed with basic tools, built stable communities in alien lands. They hunted, cooperated, and cared for each other, laying the foundations for humanity's global spread. Now, let's sail to the island of Flores, Indonesia, 80,000 years ago. The prehistoric world here is a tropical paradise with dense jungles and sparkling coasts, but it's also isolated, a crucible for evolution. In 2003, archaeologists uncovered Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit for its tiny stature, just one meter tall, with a brain of 426 cubic centimeters. These hominins weighing about 30 kilograms sparked fierce debate. Were they dwarfed Homo erectus, modern humans with a genetic condition, or something older? What's astonishing is their persistence. Homo floresiensis survived until 50,000 years ago, when they likely encountered modern humans from out of Africa too. Imagine that reunion, two branches of humanity, separated for nearly two million years, meeting on a remote island. Their archaic features, small brains, short limbs, hint at an ancient migration, perhaps one of the earliest waves out of Africa. Their tools, Oldowan-like in simplicity, reinforce this, linking them to the same technological traditions seen in Jordan, Maisel, and Dimanisi. 
A 2017 study analyzed 133 hominin specimens and offered two possibilities. Homo floresiensis was either a sister species to Homo habilis, an early Homo from 2.4 1.4 million years ago, or part of a basal Homo lineage predating larger brain species. Both scenarios suggest they split from other Homo lineages around 1.75 million years ago, ruling out a direct link to Homo erectus or Dominices hominins. Their small size may reflect island dwarfism, a phenomenon where isolated populations shrink like the miniature elephants that once roamed Flores. Our journey continues in China's Lantian region, 2.12 million years ago. The landscape is a patchwork of forests and rivers where early hominins left another clue, Oldowan tools, dated to 2.12 million years. These stones, chipped into sharp edges, mirror those found in Africa and Jordan, suggesting a shared culture of survival. No human remains accompany them, but their presence speaks volumes. Someone carried these skills across continents, adapting to China's cooler, seasonal climate. Nearby, the Gong Wang Ling Cranium, a Homo erectus fossil dated to 1.63 million years, shows that later, larger brain hominins also reached China. But the earlier tools hint at an older wave, perhaps Homo habilis or a similar species. These pioneers navigated vast distances, from Africa's savannas to Asia's forests, proving that small brains didn't limit ambition. Their tools, though simple, were versatile, used to butcher animals, process plants, and craft shelters. Finally, we arrive in southern India, at Atirampakam, 1.5 million years ago. The prehistoric landscape is a coastal plain, fringed by mangroves and teeming with wildlife. Here, archaeologists found more Oldowan tools, contemporary with Dominici's hominins. These tools suggest hominins took a coastal route, hugging South Asia's shores to reach Southeast Asia, including Flores. This route through modern Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh was likely a corridor for multiple migrations, connecting Africa to the Far East. Atiram Pakam's tools, like those elsewhere, are unassuming but powerful. They enabled hominins to exploit coastal resources, fish, shellfish, and plants, while navigating monsoon-driven floods. This site underscores South Asia's role as a crossroads, where early humans tested their adaptability in diverse ecosystems. Let's step back and analyze why these migrations happen. The traditional view was that only big-brained Homo erectus with advanced tools could conquer Eurasia. But Jordan, Massal, Dominici, and Flores tell a different story. Small-brained hominins, with brains a third of ours, ventured out as early as 2.58 million years ago. Their success wasn't about intelligence in the modern sense. It was about flexibility, cooperation, and grit. Climate likely played a role. Around 2.6 million years ago, Africa's climate grew drier, fragmenting forests into savannas. This pushed hominins to follow migrating herds or seek new water sources. But climate alone doesn't explain their range. The social bonds seen at Demonacy, caring for the elderly, sharing food, suggest groups that trusted each other, pooling resources to survive long journeys. Their old Awan tools, while simple, were a game changer, letting them process food anywhere from Jordan's hills to Flores' jungles. Another factor was curiosity. These hominins weren't just reacting to survival pressures, they were exploring. The cut marks at Masol, the tools in China, the persistence on Flores, all point to a drive to push boundaries. This isn't just a story of migration, it's a testament to the human spirit, even in its earliest forms. To make this ancient tale relatable, let's draw parallels to modern stories of resilience and community, inspired by real-life examples, but reimagined in a prehistoric context. Picture a Demonisi-like band, 1.85 million years ago. An elderly female, her teeth long gone, struggles to eat, 
Her daughter, a young hunter, spends hours chewing tough rhino meat into a soft paste, feeding her mother before herself. This act, repeated daily, drains her energy, but she persists, driven by love. Fast forward to today, consider a nurse in a remote village caring for an elderly patient despite scarce resources. Like the Damanisi daughter, her sacrifice strengthens her community, showing that care transcends time. In Jordan, 2.48 million years ago, a young male hominin stands at the edge of a river, staring at unfamiliar hills. His group hesitates, but he crosses, driven by a hunch that food lies beyond. His courage leads them to a new hunting ground. Today, think of a refugee crossing a border, seeking safety for his family. Like the Jordan Explorer, his gamble reshapes his group's future, echoing the boldness of our ancestors. On Flores, 80,000 years ago, a Homo Floresensis elder teaches her grandchildren to flake stones, preserving a tradition from two million years ago. Her lessons ensure their survival. Today, indigenous artisans pass down crafts like weaving or carving, keeping ancient knowledge alive. The Flores Elder's legacy mirrors these modern stewards of tradition, tying us to our deep past. These stories bridge the gap between prehistoric hominins and us, showing that cooperation, courage, and cultural memory are timeless. They make the distant past feel vivid, as if we're walking alongside those first wanderers. The story of Out of Africa One isn't a straight line. It's a web. Multiple waves of small-brained hominins left Africa, starting as early as 2.58 million years ago. Some reached Jordan, others India, China, and Flores. They weren't a single species, but a mosaic of early Homo, perhaps including Homo habilis or even pre-Homo forms. Their tools, consistently Oldowan, were a universal language, enabling survival from Chile de Manisi to tropical Flores. What's poetic is the reunion on Flores, 50,000 years ago. Homo floresiensis, descendants of an ancient migration, met modern humans from out of Africa too. Two paths, diverging two million years ago, converged on a tiny island, a microcosm of humanity's sprawling journey. This wasn't just migration, it was evolution in action, with each group adapting, innovating, and persisting. So what's the lesson from these ancient wanders? It's that greatness starts small. These hominins with tiny brains and basic tools didn't need to be giants to change the world. They cooperated, adapted, and dared to explore, laying the groundwork for every human achievement since. Today, when we face challenges, climate change, social divides, personal struggles, remember their example. Small actions like helping a neighbor or taking a risk can ripple across generations. We're all descendants of those first steps out of Africa. Let's keep moving forward together. Thanks for joining me on this epic journey through prehistory. If you're fascinated by our origins, check out my streaming service, Nebula, for more deep dives into the past. Until next time, keep exploring the stories that make us human.